What we're going to do is continue in our series about measurements and use dimensional analysis, the metric system, and uh, measuring and combine them to measure something very small. Now what we're going to measure is a drop of water which is considerably smaller than the instrument I have here which is a graduate cylinder. But all measurements are done by comparison. How does that drop of water measure or compare with a cubic centimeter that this is well suited for? So let's begin by looking first at our instrument. This graduate cylinder is marked off in cubic centimeters, but the major lines are 10, 20, 30, and so forth. And between the base and the 5 cubic centimeter line, there are no markings, so we're going to have to allow for that. The other thing we're going to do is construct a data table first. We're going to look at the size of a drop of water and we're going to construct it in such a way that we look at trials, number of drops that we will record, and finally the volume in cubic centimeters. Once I put the units up here, then I don't have to write them down every time. We'll also put on a lab coat. Water is not particularly dangerous, but it's a good habit in case I splice some. This particular batch of water I have colored to make it a little bit easier to see through this graduate cylinder. I have another trick you'll see also for making it easier to read. I need all the advantages I can find to measure the fraction in between each line and divide it mentally into tenths. So let's put in some water. It doesn't matter how much I put in initially because it's like a starting point. It doesn't matter where I start a race on a track, but I have to know where I start that race on a track. Now that I have my lab coat on, I'm going to take my first measurement without adding any drops of water. Zero drops will read 25.1. Now the first one, I haven't added any drops, and I have 25.1. I've added lots of trials here. There are so many possibilities of making an error, such as if I am lazy holding my pipette, or if I let the drop down, run down the side, or if I shake and shake it off accidentally. But now we're just going to add 20 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Doesn't matter how many drops I add, I just have to know how many drops I add. And let's see, get my eye down to the level. We have, it looks like 20 drops, 25.9 cubic centimeters. I'm going to spare you counting out, filling out all these trials, but I will turn the camera back on when I have these all filled out and we'll look at the type of data we have. Welcome back. I filled out my chart and now I can do some very simple calculations such as what is the total number of 
number of drops and the total volume. The total number of drops is pretty straightforward. I just add these numbers together. And we get 220 drops. And the volume is a little different. I have to use a formula. The change in volume is equal to the final volume minus the initial volume. Where did the race start? Where did it finish? Let's just try that with round numbers. I run, start at the 50 yard line and I end at the 100 yard line. 100 minus 50 is 50 yards. If I inversed it, what I would get is a minus 50 yards, which is incorrect. My initial volume was 25 point one cubic centimeters my final volume was thirty five point two cubic centimeters and the difference is ten point one cubic centimeters We're going to use this data a little bit later on, but right now it looks like it's around, do a little math here, 22 drops per cubic centimeter. We'll erase this because we're going to do a date, another data table. Some of these were less than 20. 20, this is less than a milliliter. Some of them were a little more, but that's why we take a large number of data. Our next film will be looking at another variation where I make a different pipette. See what the influence of the size of the whole of a pipette. Thank you for watching.